I think that these stay-at-home girlfriend and trad wife trends are ignoring a very real danger that comes when you fully financially depend on your partner. If you're on TikTok, you may have come across a video like this. This is what my mornings look like as a 25-year-old stay-at-home girlfriend. Which is part of the stay-at-home girlfriend trend where women, typically in their early to mid-20s, stay at home without a job and are provided financially for by their boyfriends. You may have also come across a video like this. which is part of the trad wife trend. Trad wife stands for traditional wife, and that trend focuses on this idea that women should take up more traditional gender roles, such as staying at home, with an extra emphasis on the idea that wives should submit to their husbands. Trad wives also believe that they should submit to their husbands and serve their husbands and family, and that triggers people because the words submit and serve, it makes women think that we're saying that we're less than a man. That's not what we're saying. Trad wives just believe that they are here as women for a different role, equally as important though. And though these trends are separate entities, it's pretty easy to see the ways in which they overlap. In both cases, these women are dedicated primarily to homemaking, and their lives are undeniably centered around meeting the many needs of their boyfriend or husband. This is everything I did for my boyfriend today as a stay-at-home girlfriend. But the overlap that I find most significant and the one that I want to focus on most in this video is that of financial dependence. These women rely on the men in their lives for financial security, and as someone who likes to cover topics like financial education, money, feminism, society, media, all of that, there is a lot to unpack here. By the way, if you like topics like this and video essays like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Okay, so from the surface, these videos seem so picturesque and a lot of people enjoy watching them. They have millions and millions of views. I'll admit, I am more than one of them. When I was researching for this video, I came across a lot of these videos and they're really addictive, honestly. Aesthetically pleasing days spent to getting smoothies and doing Pilates and journaling, no clock into a job or having a boss breathing down your neck. For a lot of people, it seems like a dream. But there are just as many people, if not more, who find these trends a little concerning, and I will admit I am also one of those people. There are a lot of young women and girls who are watching these videos, and so I think it's important to dissect the very real dangers behind the stay-at-home girlfriend and trad wife lifestyles beyond the glamour. So what's the problem here? Focusing on just the stay-at-home girlfriend trend for a second, you start watching some of these videos and you see this alarming similarity in the ages. Most of these women are early to mid-20s. They're very young, likely out of college, and yet they're already giving up their career and their income to stay at home and take care of the house and their boyfriend. Now you might say that's because by the time they get older, they've been wifed up already, and then they have kind of moved further in that pipeline into the trad wife role, and maybe that is true. But the fact remains that there are a lot of dangers of being this stay-at-home girlfriend without any legal protections of marriage however iffy those can sometimes be. It's pretty scary to think about women who are only a few years into their post-grad life who are already in a position of financial dependence. In your 20s, there is a good chance you've recently graduated college, you're building your career for the first time, you're out on your own, and you're independent, and the money that you save during that time and you invest goes so much further than whenever you invest and save later in life. These are years where every dollar you save and invest in your 20s is worth 10 times the amount it would be if you were in your 50s. Not only is compound interest wildly on your side, but the working world is also a lot more understanding of your lack of experience. What's scary about young women taking up these positions as stay-at-home girlfriends is they're giving up these foundational pieces of their financial future. If you're staying at home, tending to the house, and tending to your boyfriend's needs, you one, are not bringing in any income, which could help you with financial emergencies in the future, or just financial freedom in general, and two, you aren't building up career experience, so it's going to be a lot harder harder to re-enter the workforce if you ever need to one day. This is not to say that homemaking is not labor because it absolutely is, but the reality is that domestic labor remains unrecognized and uncompensated in our society despite its immense value. With the position of a stay-at-home girlfriend, this invisible labor problem is exacerbated because you have an unequal benefits relationship at play. If you're a stay-at-home girlfriend, you are providing unpaid labor that directly benefits your boyfriend, but while you commit to labor that isn't formally recognized via money or professional institutions, your boyfriend is still able to build his career, make money of his own, and create a formalized professional legacy for himself. You don't. Once 
a woman gives up financial independence to a mate, it's over. Personal agency is at the center of this whole conversation because, yes, women can enter these relationships, be it as a stay-at-home girlfriend or as a trad wife, with full autonomy and agency, hopefully, unless there's coercion or manipulation. But as time goes on, the woman has no savings, investments, income, or career of her own, and the dynamic shifts. She is now reliant on this man for just basic things like food and shelter. When that happens, one's personal agency is dramatically lowered. The biggest danger here? The ability to leave abusive relationships. There's something called financial abuse, and this is a really common tactic used by abusers to control and manipulate a relationship. Research indicates that financial abuse occurs in 99% of domestic violence cases, and the reason so many people stay in abusive relationships is because they rely on their abuser financially. It's hard to leave when you have no other options. Now, this happens a lot nowadays, but it also happened a lot back in the 1950s, which is a time that, at least in the trad wife spheres, is extremely glamorized, with lots of aesthetic depictions of the cult of domesticity. We've all seen the colorful pictures of housewives in their pretty aprons and their perfectly styled hair as they tend to the home, but we forget that those images are merely rose-tinted ones that are often created by corporations to sell things like home appliances. A place for everything. That sure helps around my kitchen. Everything in its place. That's easy. And that this caricature was primarily reserved for middle to upper class white women. Women of color and those of the lower class were not intended to be afforded the same colorful domestic bliss that's pictured. Not to mention that these 50s propaganda images that are so fondly looked back on often ignore the very sad and oppressive realities of these housewives. We have the more abstract feelings of emptiness, which is captured well in Betty Friedan's book, The Feminine Mystique, that often led women to taking tranquilizers and heavy use of alcohol alcohol to more concrete examples like marital abuse. Now, domestic abuse wasn't recognized as a crime in the 50s, so it's hard to pinpoint exact numbers, but we know anecdotally a lot of these women felt trapped in loveless and or abusive relationships. But what if your relationship with your boyfriend or husband is completely loving and safe? What if he is kind and affectionate and a fantastic financial provider who would never lay a finger on you? I believe those are absolutely real situations. I do not think that Every relationship that has a stay-at-home girlfriend or a trad wife is destined to be an abusive, awful, loveless relationship. That is not the case at all. Some of these relationships are happy and healthy and both partners respect and adore each other. But the reality is that even with all of that, there is a vulnerability to being financially dependent. The vulnerability of financial dependence does not stop at abuse. It extends to the awful but very real possibility of death. If your partner passes away unexpectedly, and you have no form of income, no savings, investments, or ability to understand your financial situation because you have no financial education, you can find yourself in a very difficult and dangerous situation. And this is unfortunately a position many, many women find themselves in at some point in their life. Various surveys show that nearly 80% of women will at some point become the sole financial decision maker in their life, and many widows will spend decades controlling their own finances. And so just like those glamorized depictions of the 50s can flatten the very complicated relationship women had with traditional roles at the time, I think that these stay-at-home girlfriend and trad wife trends on the internet are ignoring a very real danger that comes when you fully financially depend on your partner. Yes, people get to make their own choices in this world 100%, but choices are not made in a vacuum. People, messaging, media, all of it influences the way that we look at and navigate this world. And so I think it's imperative that we look at this kind of media with a critical eye. Speaking of media, let's dig into a quick movie reference, shall we? If you saw the trailer for Don't Worry Darling, you probably saw the nod to 50s fashion and gender roles and lifestyle. Women dress in these beautiful gowns as they greet their men who come home from work in suits. And we have Chris Pine's gravelly voice telling us about how women are expected to make their men food and keep the house clean. We ask for strength, <laughs> food at home, a house clean, With you all the time. and discretion above all else. It's picturesque, but it's also quickly unsettling. 
Okay, before I continue this quick tie into Don't Worry Darling, I wanna put an official spoiler alert. So jump to the end of this video chapter if you do not want to get any spoilers if you haven't seen the movie, but if you have seen it or you don't mind spoilers, you can keep on watching. So in Don't Worry Darling, we quickly realize that everything is not as it seems. The women are actually stuck in this mental prison where in reality, they're just trapped to a bed and have their eyes like, whoa open, you know? There's an illusion of the carefree lifestyle while in actuality being stripped completely of their autonomy. In the real world, the women can't even feed or bathe themselves, let alone have a career or even just a life outside of the bed that they've been chained to. And in the Victory Project, they're not even allowed to drive or leave the town. Yes, they can go and have dance classes and shopping experiences with their friends, but the trade-off is their total autonomy. Now, I wanna be careful with how I'm drawing comparisons to this movie because like I mentioned earlier, not every one of these relationships is abusive. And certainly not every one of these partners is actually a disheveled Harry Styles with an American accent and deep-rooted misogyny. No, that's not the case. But I think that this movie serves as an interesting analogy to the vulnerability that women can experience when they're fully financially dependent on a partner. It's harder to escape and choices stop becoming completely your own. It might look really beautiful on the outside, but the experience itself might not be. All right, end of spoiler alert. Unfortunately, women have historically been underrepresented or even flat out excluded from the world of money. Women at this point are not allowed to hold any property of their own. All their property is actually accorded to their husband. Any property that they bring, any wages they earn, in fact, belong to their husband. Very, very severe restrictions around legal status and married women. Even now, the default representatives of the finance world are men. I mean, see the finance bros thing. And in the home, at least for heterosexual relationships, men are often seen as the default money manager. What's wrong with daddy? Ah, oh, he's just paying bills. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to concern us. <laughs> These archaic roles are still rearing their heads. I know so many women, many of whom who make money, have jobs, but they don't know anything about their finances. They defer completely to their boyfriend or their husband to manage their savings, investments, and financial goals. That is a huge problem. And not just because women on average get better investment returns than men, which is also true, but no, it's bad. Any time we are kept in the dark about our financial future and our financial health. We as women need to inject ourselves into these financial conversations and decisions because financial literacy is critical and these financial decisions affect us deeply. Financial literacy unlocks better choices and better security and better pizza, Papa John's, but also it makes it harder to be manipulated and controlled. When we have a say in how we make and use our money, we're able to build the confidence and power to better align our lives with our values. It's not about stripping our partners of power, but building ourselves up as teammates who are able to tackle life and money together. Relationships are absolutely about depending on one another. Interdependence is such a crucial part of a healthy relationship. However, when you move into the territory of relying wholly on your partner for your financial well-being, you've now entered a space of one-sided codependence. Remember that you are the main character of your story. So many of these stay-at-home girlfriend and trad wife videos center men at the narrative. Doing this for the man, it's catering for the man, but you are the protagonist. Ultimately, this is your life. Make sure you're the one in control of it. Maybe you've gotten this far in the video and you still wanna be a stay-at-home girlfriend or a trad wife. I'm not here to tell you you shouldn't be, but what should you do? Here are a few potential solutions to reduce your vulnerability. One is to keep at least one foot in the working world in some way. So I will give major props to the TikTok creators who make these stay-at-home girlfriend and trad wife videos because they're able to make some money, hopefully, out of these videos and still building up some skills like marketing and social media that could be applied to a job if they ever needed one one day. If you're not a TikTok creator, this could look like part-time work, freelancing, building up a small business, even doing something like volunteering and admin work, something that builds up some skills. And it can also look like just keeping your network alive. So still connecting with former colleagues or former managers, being active on LinkedIn, anything that still allows you some interaction with the working world. So it makes it a little bit easier to get back in if you ever need to. Another potential way is a prenup. Now I am not a prenup expert, 
expert or a legal expert in any way, but my understanding is that this can help you because if you're someone who's going to be a stay-at-home wife, stay-at-home mom, something like that, you are forfeiting potential earnings in the future. So you're giving up money you could have made if you'd stayed out in the working world. That might be a great arrangement when things are going well, but if things go poorly, it can lead to a really bad position where you don't have any money and a prenup or a postnup can sometimes help create some type of financial protection for you. The last thing I'll mention that you can do to protect yourself is learn more about personal finance. And I think that everyone should do this regardless of what kind of relationship you're in or what position you're in financially. Financial literacy is so, so important and it can really help anybody. The more that you can understand and your own financial situation, your choices and options that you have, all of that, it's going to make for a better life and it's just going to make you a little bit less vulnerable. So what do you think about the stay-at-home girlfriend and trad wife trends? Do you think they're dangerous? Do you think they're harmless? Let me know in the comments below. I'm really interested to see what you guys think. And thank you so much if you've gotten this far through the video and watched. I really, really appreciate it. If you like videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. I have some other video essays up and I'm planning to make a lot more and make sure you like this video too. And if you have any ideas on what topics I should cover next, just let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.